Hello and welcome back to the Elephant Lounge. I'm your host Tuesday. I want to thank you for joining me and I'm back talking about Michael Jackson, Leaving Neverland, that whole thing. I don't have much structure for this episode, we'll put it that way. It'll be a little bit of rambling and ranting. However, I hope you enjoy it all the same. If you do, let me know. If not, well, come back another time or don't. Let's start off with Aaron Carter. Have you heard this? This comes from Perez Hilton, and normally I'm not too much in agreement with Perez Hilton. However, I do enjoy him, and he has been on the right side of the Leaving Neverland and Michael Jackson issue. So if you haven't already, please go over to his channel on YouTube and check out some of the comments that he has had to say about Michael Jackson. I think you'll find it interesting. Good stuff. So he posted this yesterday on his blog. Aaron Carter is revealing more information about his relationship with Michael Jackson. Recently, the Aaron's party singer, along with his mom, Jane Carter, joined the cast of WETV's Marriage Boot Camp Reality Stars Family Edition to deal with his feelings of resentment and betrayal. In an interview conducted after the show, Nick Carter's brother said the counseling he received on the reality TV show helped him sort out his feelings regarding the King of Pop. Though Jackson, quote, was a really good guy, unquote, the 31-year-old said Michael once did something, quote, a little bit inappropriate, unquote, to him. He revealed, quote, Michael was a really good guy as far as I know. He never did anything that was inappropriate except for one time. There was one thing that he did that was a little bit inappropriate. Carter did not elaborate on his statement. So hopefully we will find out soon. I don't know for sure. We need to respect his time and his process. Do I think one thing happened that was inappropriate? Absolutely not. There are recordings on YouTube that have Aaron Carter admitting Michael Jackson gave him alcohol, gave him marijuana. None of those behaviors are appropriate. I'm assuming in regards to this quote, he's talking about something that's sexual. Do I believe it was just one time? No, absolutely not. And what's typical for victims of child sexual abuse is their tendency to minimize things. And even when you have people like Wade and James, who clearly have come out with a lot of details, Details, they will always hold back. They are still holding back some things. And we know that in Wade's case, he has revealed a little bit more. That part of his lawsuit has been sealed and remains sealed. So there are many things that we don't know. And I'm sure with James, he's still walking a long road. And will we ever fully know everything that happened to them? No, of course not. Why would we? We see this with all all types of victims of abuse. It's not with just with child sexual abuse. You can have physical abuse or verbal abuse. There are women who find themselves, or even men, who find themselves in domestic violence situations. They minimize situations that have occurred between them and their spouses. It's part of abuse. When you're a victim, you have a tendency to blame yourself and put everything upon yourself. We need to remember this. This is why it takes so long for these victims to come forward. But if you go on Aaron Carter's Twitter, you will see fans actually, not all of them, but a good number of the comments over there are complaints that he's making Michael Jackson look bad. Excuse me, he just said something inappropriate happened with him and Michael Jackson. So you're taking another victim and you're going to chastise him because he makes Michael Jackson look bad? You're more concerned about the image of a celebrity, an image that's not real? Because you see people, Michael Jackson fans want you and I to believe that 
everything we know about psychology, that we know about sociology, that we know about criminal investigation, that when we look at somebody and we can see a grown man in his sexual prime sharing his bed, bed hopping with boys one after the other, year after year after year, being accused of child molestation, paying out millions multiple times for said child molestation, continuing to sleep in a bed with a child year after year, even after being accused of child molestation. No, no, that's a pedophile. But see, when it comes to Michael Jackson, you see... He didn't do it. Nothing to see here. Move along. Don't you know Michael Jackson doesn't have a childhood? Don't you know he's some type of deity that has graced this earth? Oh, yes. Everybody's just out to get money. That's what it is. Because he has money and he's a celebrity. It must mean that anybody who says, hey, that guy touched me inappropriately and had ample opportunity, motive, and time to do so and has been accused of doing so before, no, no, that person just wants money, you see. This is what they expect us to believe. Thousands of rich people on the planet, how many of them are accused? repeatedly for being a pedophile and somehow aren't a pedophile. How does that happen? In what world do these people live in? I just, I don't get it. My mind is blown at the amount of ignorance. It doesn't matter how much you put in front of these people, how obvious it is. If it's anybody else, they'd be a pedophile. But because it's Michael Jackson, it can't be. That they're all just after their money? Yeah, because that's just the easiest way to get money, right? I mean, I know when I need money, I'm low on money, which I'm low on money right now. You can donate to my Patreon if you want. And every time that's happened, what I do is I I just, I accuse a celebrity of abusing me when I was a child, you know, because it's easy to do. It's really easy. I don't have to get an attorney or anything, you know. I just accuse and they just pay me and, you you know, nobody hates me. It's all good. It's an easy, quick buck. That's what Michael Jackson fans want you to believe. That's what they want us to believe. It's amazing to me. But hey, what can I say? Look, I'm going to talk about Twitter here. Why Why the hell am I on Twitter? Why do I even put myself through this? And if you're like me and you get frustrated with this, listen, I just feel as though I have to be a part of a collective voice that's on social media, whether it's doing this podcast or doing something on Twitter or Facebook, just to let these fans know. We have to let them know that there are people that do believe Wade and James, that we are out here, that we support them, that we support all victims of child sexual abuse, that we realize this idea that they're lying at this point is absurd, not to mention that they both have witnesses, witnesses that were willing to come forward back then. They weren't able to come forward because that's what happens when you're groomed and you love your abuser. It's similar to Stockholm Syndrome. But for whatever reason, Wacko fans want to pretend that I guess they have a degree in psychology and they know everything. Even though all of the investigators knew and believed that Michael Jackson was guilty, just so happens to have an amusement park, a train station. Oh, we can go on about that train station. My God. On and on. Every indication of a pedophile. Every single one. Go back and listen to my podcast. That's, I believe, number four, the profile of a pedophile. It's all out there in black and white. He fits the exact definition of a pedophile, but somehow, because it's Michael Jackson, it doesn't apply to him. Is Michael Jackson not human? Somebody help me out here. Here we go. Let's let's dive into Twitter here for a minute. Just the land of stupid. 30 plus years of alleged abuse. FBI investigation. Racist DA. Police raid. High-priced prosecutors. I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. I'm sorry. I had to crack up at that. High-priced prosecutors. I can't even say that with a straight face. Biased media. And they didn't even prove a misdemeanor. But some anti-MJ f***tard on Twitter cracked the case. I don't even know how to deal with this much stupidity. So I explained, look, there was no FBI investigation. If you go onto the FBI website where there are files, they published 
what, 300 pages or so, it says, it says, I'm going to read it. I'm going to read the whole thing again for you. Even though I did it in the first podcast. Michael Jackson, 1958 to 2009, was a famous singer and entertainer between 1993 and 1994 and separately between 2004 and and 2005. That's two years, okay? Jackson was investigated by California law enforcement agencies for possible child molestation. He was acquitted of all such charges. The FBI provided, here we go, the FBI provided technical and investigative assistance to these agencies during the cases. Technical and investigative assistance to these agencies during the cases. Now, the other thing that shocks me is this person claimed that they're from the United States, but somehow they were unaware that there are crimes that are handled by local authorities, local jurisdictions, inside the state, versus federal crimes that are handled by the FBI. Child molestation, as it pertains to these cases, is going to be handled by the local authorities. It's not a federal crime, period. There's no arguing here. And then a racist DA. Okay, show me proof. Where's your proof? You're going to go around calling someone a racist. It's so typical in today's age to just go around and call people racists without any proof or any demonstration of this police raid. Okay, yes. And they found child erotica during that raid, by the way. High-priced prosecutors. Apparently, this person doesn't understand how prosecutors are paid. And then, of course, the biased media line. We've all heard it a million times, and I've gone over this over and over and over and over again. And if you listen to my podcast prior, the one concerning LaToya, you will not hear a receptive Katie Couric. LaToya and Howard Stern, they both discuss how the media treated LaToya for coming out against Michael Jackson and talking about his behavior and what he was doing and paying money to little boys' families. I lived through the prime years of Michael Jackson. I'm older than Wade and James. Not by much, but I'm older. I'm actually just 39 permanently, but we're not going to get into that. The point is, I remember this explicitly. There were comedians that came out against Michael Jackson. Yeah, absolutely. People made fun of it. But for the most part, the media was extremely fair to Michael Jackson. And they were very dismissive of anybody who accused him of any wrongdoing. That's a fact. Tabloids, different story. Nobody cared about tabloids, except old people. Old people like tabloids. I actually like tabloids myself. I don't think they're right, but I like them because they're entertaining. Okay, here's here's another one. Now, I don't know if this is just a person who's... Here's the deal about Michael Jackson fans, okay? I can't tell if they're just... How do I put this? I can't tell if Michael Jackson fans are just dumb. You know, the dendrites are blocked with bong resin, the axons aren't firing properly. I can't tell. Maybe that's the case. Or if they support Michael Jackson because of their own personal interest. Maybe something else is going on there that we're unaware of. I would just advise that if you are a Wacko fan, I would advise you to learn English. Start there and then work your way up to learning about a case, okay? Let's start with the English language. Because for some reason, reading comprehension skills are also a struggle among this small community of wacko stannies. Something is severely wrong. Or like Michael Savage would say, say it with me, fire bad food good. Work on that for a few weeks, then come back to me for the next lesson. Okay, moving on. I'm sorry, I've been rambling enough. Here's another tweet. He was not sent to prison because there was no evidence and the Arvizos were telling insane, probably untrue lies. Untrue lies. Yep, that's what they said. You'll get it. Okay, and here's the worst one. This wins 
the dumbest thing I've seen on Twitter all day. This is the, we should have like some kind of award maybe where I, I give an award for the dumbest tweets of the day. This is the dumbest tweet. This gets a platinum star. Nothing left to treat anyone in any way. If four more people come up with MJ abused me, I will still not believe them. I see evidence pointing towards his innocence and a pattern of extortion. And in this time period, I know that they will try and offer money for more victims. I'm not kidding. It's a real tweet. I will try and get this on my blog so you can see it for yourself. Because I I couldn't believe anybody could write something so stupid and racist at the same time. I'm Listen, maybe I'm jumping the gun. Maybe someone can clarify it for me. But when you're putting, I know they will try and offer money for more victims. And we know that Michael Jackson was an anti-Semite, hated the Jews. Yeah, a lot of these people hate Jews as well. I've seen quite a few anti-Semitic comments from Michael Jackson fans as well, because they have this fantasy in their head that he was going to expose the Illuminati. Yeah, right. He was the Illuminati, if there is an Illuminati. Okay, so let's just go over this. If four more people come up with MJ abuse me, I will still not believe them. And this just angers me, honestly. It really angers me. Not only is it just ignorant, it's insulting. And we have to remember that how many victims are still out there, number one, and how many people are just victims of child sexual abuse and they're watching this circus go on on social media and people like this commenting. I'm not even a victim of child sexual abuse and it horrifies me. I couldn't imagine seeing something like this and feeling so defeated. How are you supposed to come out in a world where people refuse to believe the obvious? And then the the next one is just, the next line is just, I mean, my head hurts. My freaking head hurts even reading this. I see evidence pointing towards his innocence and a pattern of extortion. Okay, now listen, listen. You cannot prove a negative. There's no evidence that proves innocence. That doesn't even make sense. Take a science class. There's no evidence that points towards someone's innocence. No, it would just mean that there's no evidence at all and he wouldn't have been charged and nothing would have happened. It's just like those books of naked children that he has. You know, if if he was just a guy and he was just doing his own thing and he liked art and that's what he collected and he just so happened to have these art books, no one would care. No one would say anything because no one would even know he had them. The reason why we know he had them is because he was molesting children. That's why. That's why it became child erotica. What do you think that means? Ugh. So stupid. So stupid. I see evidence pointing towards his innocence. Like the dumbest thing I've ever heard. And then a pattern of extortion. What extortion? They keep wanting to say Jordy's parents extorted uh, Michael Jackson. When and where did Evan and June get arrested and charged with extortion? Extortion is a crime. This charge was investigated. Guess what police found? Zero! Nada! Nothing. Nothing was found because they didn't do anything wrong. In the other case with Gavin, that was in criminal court. They could have gone to civil court. Darn right. That's That's what Nicole Brown's family did with O.J. Simpson. They did lose in the criminal court, but guess what? They took him to the civil court and they won. And Gavin Arvizio would have likely won in civil court because it's a preponderance of the evidence, not evidence beyond a reasonable doubt, which admittedly it is difficult to prove in cases of child molestation, which is unfortunate. But that is the truth. But Gavin could have gone to civil court. He didn't. So where's the extortion? Where is the extortion? Where is this extortion that you're talking about? Where's this pattern of extortion? It makes absolutely no sense. I just am at a loss with 
how one comes to believe that totally different families, different time periods, and yet all of them just want money. That's what I'm supposed to believe. There's thousands of celebrities who are powerful, that have money, and I don't see them being accused multiple times of child sexual abuse, unless, of course, they're diddling children. Again, for some reason, the rules of logic and the rules of everything somehow don't apply to Michael Jackson. Only in the mind of a wacko stanny does that make any sense. All right, I'm going to cut it off here. Otherwise, I'm just going to be repeating myself. And I hope you join me next time. I'll be back. <laughs>